A viewer named Nick bought this Acer Nitro 5 because it had a broken hinge and he was gonna fix it. Unfortunately, after trying to fix it, it no longer powers on. Nick said that he took it to a shop to see if they could figure out why it wouldn't power on. They couldn't figure it out, so he wanted to send it to me to see if I could figure it out. Now, obviously, the first thing we need to do is remove these stickers and then we can get to the repair. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. And now with all those stickers removed, I'm gonna go through with a Q-tip and some IPA and remove all the excess adhesive. I'll start by giving a good soaking, then I'll come through and wipe it off in a minute after the IPA has had a chance to soak into the adhesive a little bit. And there we go. Now we'll either fix it and bring it back to its former glory, or it can at least die with respect. What is going on here? These are metal, so... I don't know, maybe screw to screw in there and then cut the top of the screw off. I'm not sure what that would be. It was covered up by that sticker. It does worry me though, because obviously there's a screen back here. I guess now the only thing to do is turn it over and open it up and see what we got going on. And there we go. Here's our first look at the board and I think I might see a problem maybe. So right down here, it's kind of hard to see we definitely have some damage on this wire right here. It looks like it is still connected though, so that's probably not an issue, but let's plug it in and see if we get power back here. All right, and here we go. Okay, we do have 19 volts coming in. Let's see if we get 19 volts back here on this connector. 19 volts, 19 volts, 19 volts. Okay, so we do have 19 volts coming into the board right here. Let's just check this battery connector real quick. Zero volts, one volt, 0 0.1 volt, 0 0.1 volt, 0 0.1 volt. Okay, so there's very little power in the battery, but I don't think that will cause it to not turn on. Let's see if there's any lights on this thing. So it looks like the LEDs are right over here. There's definitely no LEDs lit up right now so the computer is not recognizing that it is plugged in. And that's probably because there's some sort of issue on the board itself. Overall, I'm actually pretty impressed so far with the look of this computer, given the fact that it was repaired by the person that bought it. And then it was also looked at by a computer shop. Uh, it looks like all the screws are here. I don't see any major damage on the board, so that's definitely a nice change. But now I need to start taking a little closer look at this board and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. And of course they didn't have the perfect amount of thermal paste. Perfect amount of thermal paste. So we'll be fixing that here in a little bit. And I think that is all the screws. Oh, what do we have over here? This is definitely a problem. I don't know if it's the only problem, but this is a good place to start. Clearly, this MOSFET is totally burned out, so we need to replace that first. JLC PCB is a great place to get your SMT PCB assembled. Not only do they offer quality manufacturing services, they also offer fast shipping, and they are now offering a new service, Global Parts Sourcing. With the current electronic parts shortage, it can be really hard to find the parts you need, for your SMT assembly. With JLC PCB's Global Parts Sourcing Service, you can make sure that you get the parts you need from many quality suppliers, such as Mouser, DigiKey, Arrow, and several others. This ensures that your parts are there when you need them. To get started with the Global Sourcing Parts Service, just sign into your account and visit the Parts Manager. Once you click on Order Parts, you'll see the Global Sourcing Parts button. Once you click on the Global Sourcing Parts button, you can enter the part number you need right in the search box, and JLC PCB will search the websites of its parts suppliers to find the part you need. You can then just enter the quantity of parts you need and add it to your cart. Now, once your order is paid for and complete, you can go to your parts library and see all the parts you've ordered. If you wanna try out this service, I put links in the description that'll take you right there. So here is our new part. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the part to just buy online, other than in a few places in China that looked like they were sold out and it would have taken forever to get here. So I had to buy a broken motherboard off of eBay, which is not ideal, but at the same time, I wanna get this thing fixed. This broken motherboard cost me about $170 and hopefully has the good parts that I need. It looks like this is the exact same part, so I'm gonna be pulling this off of this board and installing it onto the other one. I'll be using my hot air soldering station to remove it and then also my hot air soldering station to remove the old broken one and install this working one onto it. So that did not go well. This MOSFET got so hot that it just totally fused to the layer of board underneath it. So this right here is the 
copper board layer that was underneath it and no matter how much heat I put on I just couldn't remove it and this whole piece just totally delaminated from the board. It looks like it mostly was delaminated because this is just totally burned right here. So um, this means we're gonna have to rebuild some of these traces. So what I'm gonna be doing next is I will install the new MOSFET and there are some good pins right here it looks like so I can get a nice solid uh, connection right here. And then these pins up here, I'm just gonna be running a wire from each of these components here over to these pins on the other side of the MOSFET. So I'm gonna start the rebuild process by putting some fresh solder on these little pads right here. That'll make sure that there is a good starting point for a good connection to the new MOSFET. And then after that, I'll install the MOSFET. And then after that, I will install the trace wires from these components right here over to the MOSFET. So this is definitely not pretty. In fact, I would go as far as to say it's very ugly, but I think it's actually gonna do the job pretty well and I'll show you why. So this is the board that we removed that MOSFET from and you can see all of these connections are all connected together on this same pad. So that means these connections right here are also all connected together. The other thing that we notice is there's a lot of connections underneath this MOSFET right here since this whole pad was removed, we don't have any of those connections underneath it. So by putting several layers of wire here along with all this solder, I'm hoping that will kind of act as the heat sink underneath the MOSFET. I'm not sure it's gonna do that great of a job, but I think just maybe we might get away with it. So with this MOSFET replaced, let's get this board back in the computer and see if we get any power. Before I do that, I just wanted to show you how fried this MOSFET is. So this is that layer that pulled up right here and you can see like it just will not it's just completely fused to the MOSFET so this is the underside right here and it's just there's just no, it like has just totally turned into part of the MOSFET so that's why this was so hard to get off and I couldn't get it off without just removing this entire layer there's just no way to do that when it's been fused to it that hard now, real quick, I do want to make sure that there are no shorts on this MOSFET and that the gate, drain, and source are not shorted together. So let's start with checking for ground short. None there, none there, and none there. That's great news. Okay, nothing there, nothing there, and nothing there. These should have low resistance like this, so nothing to worry about there. Let's check the other side real quick. And power and ground pins are not shorted together. And also I don't see any fuses here. So I think this board is ready to go in to the laptop so we can test it. All right, so I've got the power cable right here. There's two lights right here. I think one of them is probably the power light. I'm gonna first try it without the battery and see what it does. If we have a problem on that MOSFET area, that's obviously right here. So keep your eyes right there and watch for a spark or, you know, an explosion. Here we go, let's see what happens. Come on. Okay, no lights, also no explosions, so that's good. Hmm. I mean, with that area burned out so bad, it wouldn't surprise me if there was more going on in here. Let's get a multimeter and just check here and see what kind of power we've got. Okay, 19.2 coming in. Zero volts there. Zero volts there. There seems to be just no power to the laptop. So let's try it with the battery plugged in. I don't think it should matter, but we're gonna try it anyway. And now uh, with the battery plugged in. And we still got nothing. 19.2 coming in and nothing after that. Okay, so I think what we need to do is remove this board and check underneath and see where we're losing the voltage underneath the board, right near that MOSFET we replaced. So we have the power connector over here. Let's plug that in first. And now we can see where we have power and we don't have power. Zero power on the MOSFET so far. Okay, 19.26 volts on all of these connections and zero volts on all the rest. Now I don't have any sort of schematic for this MOSFET or this board, but I'm assuming that there needs to be something 
telling the MOSFET to power on, to let power through. That's what I think is going on. So I'm guessing that maybe there's something in here that is not telling the MOSFET to power on. The good news is that our soldering job, even though it's ugly, looks to be working normally, as far as I can tell anyway. It also is possible that this MOSFET is bad because we did get it off of a parts motherboard. So that is definitely a possibility, but I think it's probably just fine. And looking at it under a thermal camera, I see absolutely no hot spots. Let's turn it over and check the other side. And same thing here, nothing standing out at all as far as heat. So as far as I can tell, this MOSFET might be bad. We have power coming in on this end of the MOSFET, but zero power coming out. And as far as I know, there's nothing else that would be feeding this other than the input power. Now, like I said before, there's not really anywhere to get these, at least in a timely manner. So I'm gonna do something that I'm not sure I should. I have this other random computer motherboard, and there's also a power MOSFET right here that looks pretty similar to this one. They are both in-channel MOSFETs, so theoretically they're kind of doing the same thing. This is something I definitely wouldn't recommend, but at the same time, I'm no laptop repair guy. I'm just making this video for fun, so maybe it's something that you can do. Either way, I'm gonna take this MOSFET, put it in place of this MOSFET, and let's see what happens. And another job that is very ugly, but at least should get the job done. And now with that MOSFET replaced yet again, let's plug it in and see if we happen to get lucky and it works. Ah, bummer. No LEDs, nothing going on up here. Let's check voltage. 19 volts in, zero volts there, zero volts there. So I'm not really sure what I'm missing here. There's gotta be something I'm missing because this MOSFET's doing the exact same thing as the other one. And it's very unlikely that there's two that are both bad. And we are back under the microscope so I can give you an update. I removed the MOSFET again and found that on this, this where this pad used to be, there's one via right here. A via is just kind of a connection that goes through the motherboard. So right down here, there's a via and without this, copper pad down here, there's no way to connect the voltage from here down to there. So what I did is I just ran my trace wire from here down to the via, connected it with some solder, and then around here, and then down here. And I actually soldered a coil of wire under the chip and connected it right here. My worry is that this chip isn't gonna have enough cooling if it's not connected like that. So I put a nice big coil of wire under here and connected it there. So now with all that work being done, I'm gonna plug it in again and cross my fingers and hope that it'll work this time. So we've got the battery plugged in, we have the DC in power right here, and then we also have the LED that indicates charging right here. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Oh, here we go. We've got an orange charge light. Yes, that means that part of it is done but I still don't know if it's gonna work in the laptop. So I'm gonna get it fully installed in the laptop, then we'll test it and see if it'll actually turn on. But this is great news so far. And I think we all know the real problem here is just that it didn't have... Perfect amount of thermal paste. There we go. Now, obviously it's gonna work just fine. So I finally have it back together enough to plug it in and see if it'll turn on. Okay, here we go. Let's plug it in. And it is now plugged in. We do have a charge light over here you can't really see. Let's try and power it on. And the fans come on. The light over here comes on. Keyboard lights are on. We're definitely getting nothing on the screen right now. So right now it seems like it's powering on and back off just constantly. Oh, here we go. Wow, look at that. We fixed it. That's awesome. Let's see if it'll fully start up. Wow, and there we go. Unfortunately, Andy C is not who I bought this from, but Andy C, your computer is now fixed. I gotta say, this one felt really good. It was a pretty difficult fix, but I'm glad we pulled it out, and it's great to see another laptop fixed. If you wanna see a video where I bought five broken high-end laptops for $2,500 to see if I can fix them, I'll put that video up on your screen now so you can come check it out. 
and see if I can fix those ones. I'll leave a link for JLC PCB if you want to check them out in my description. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.